14, which is the commandment that says, seek God's kingdom. Now, when we speak about seeking God's kingdom, what we're talking about is a very powerful, powerful thing. And seeking God's kingdom, seeking God's kingdom is something that generally people do not do. Especially when you think of the word seeking. People seek to get rich. People seek to have fun. Seek to have pleasure. Seek to gain fame. They seek a lot of things, but what God cuts across the way men do in practice and calls Christians to seek God's kingdom. And I want to uh, basically um, shoot from the, from the hip straight up here for a, a couple minutes to, to establish this idea of seeking God's kingdom and His righteousness first. And that word first is the key to what we're going to have you think through on. Now, what I want to begin with is a real, real review of, of God and history, basically. Just to get you into a place where I can teach you what I want you to think today. So, I want to start with the idea for you today to think of this. In the beginning was God and nothing else. Nothing else. Because the record says God then created the heavens and the earth. So, before the universe existed, God was. And God created everything. God is the creator king. It's his creation. And he made us. He made all life. He created mankind. He made what was his stuff. And he looked at it as the God creator, the one that owned it all, and said, that's good. And then when he brought man into the world, he told men, Adam and Eve, the first people, he said, I want you to take care of my garden. And you, I want you to grow and replenish everything, control, learn how to take care of it, go for it. But it's his stuff. He's the creator. Now, I want you to understand what that means to us then. First of all, think about, now, I was born in the USA. First of all, I didn't ask to be born. I didn't have that choice, no. right? And I didn't have the choice of where I was born. I was born not by my will, I was born in America, not by my will. But guess what? In spite of me not choosing those things, the United States government chose to rule over me. I am obligated to obey their laws. Whether I like them or don't like them, whether I voted for them or didn't vote for them, they control me. And if I decide I don't like the rules or the laws of the land, I can break them. But if I do, I will be Caught, the police will drag me to court. They will find me before a judge and say, guess what? You didn't obey our laws. And I said, well, I was born here by my choice, and I didn't choose to be here. I was born here. And they say, we don't care. We don't care whether you like it or don't like it. We don't care if you don't like the carpet of the, the court. We don't like, care if you don't like the look of the judge. We don't care if you don't like the feel of the way the bailiff looked at you. We don't care if the jury was mean to you. Guess what? It doesn't matter what you think, want, or like. You are under this law. You shoplifted. Therefore, you're going to jail. We don't care. Nobody cares. The rule, the control, is by the government. Whether I like it or don't like it. It makes sense? In the same way, what we're saying here is the king of the universe, God himself who created us, we're under his rule. Whether you like it or not, whether you want it or not, he will judge us by his rules. His commands have absolute sway over us. We can do what everybody else does and say, we don't care what he says. We don't like you. We don't believe in you. We don't want you to be our ruler. We don't care what the Bible says. It doesn't change reality. Just like it won't change reality. I mean, you go to if you were taken for shoplifting in the court and you say, I don't believe the judge exists. Does he vanish out of the courtroom? If they say, I don't agree with the judge, does he say, oh, well, go home then? No, he doesn't care. He'll 
find you guilty, and He'll punish you. It doesn't matter what your opinion, your thoughts, your likes, your wishes are. You violate His law, you get punished for it. And the same thing is straight up. Every man and every woman has to answer to God, like it or not. That is the facts. That's why we get in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, we get this. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive the things done in his body according to what he has done, whether good or bad, according to God, not according to me. According to what God says is good, according to what God says is bad. Knowing therefore, look at that, the terror of the Lord. Knowing the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are well known to God, and I also trust are well known to your consciences. He says, because God's judgment is so harsh, the terror of God, we beg people and try to persuade them to bend their knee to God, because it doesn't matter what their opinion is. Make sense? Yes. Now, going on then, 1 Peter 4.17 says, For the time has come for judgment to begin at the house of God. God doesn't give excuse for people in church. He, in fact, He starts His judgment here in church. He doesn't give any breaks to anybody. He doesn't say, oh, well, as long as you're a Christian, you can do what you want. He still demands obedience from His people, doesn't He? It doesn't matter that we say, oh, well, we get a break. No, in fact, it says, it, in fact, the judgment is going to be in the house of God, and if it begins with us, what will be of the end of those who do not obey the gospel of God? The word obey or submission to authority is the key here. <clears throat> when we talk about the kingdom, we talk about being submitted to the commands of the Lord God Almighty. To every man, whether they like it or not, whether they say they're not a Christian or whether they're an atheist, it doesn't matter. It doesn't change reality. Judgment Day is coming for every man. Period. That's truth. That's the facts. That's reality. That's straight up, isn't it? Now, 2 Thessalonians goes on to say, so that we ourselves boast of you among the churches of God. He's writing to the church at Thessalonica. And he's talking about them. He's saying, you know what? We have observed you people there in that town, you Christians. We are so excited about you. We boast of you among the churches of God all over the area. Because of your patience and faith and all your persecutions and tribulations that you endure. Because of Jesus, those Christians in that town have <coughs> suffered under the hand of hate by the unchristian population. They couldn't stand the message of Jesus. They couldn't stand the gospel of Christ. And they so hated they tried to shut them up. They tried to stop them from what they were saying. They didn't want to hear it. And they sure didn't want to hear it 